So the very last uh, moment I, I left it here, uh, we had the use case scenario of I'm trying to save something with a similar title, same number, same year. Here, Superboy, number one, 1988. Trying to save that gives me the error because I already have Superman, number one, 1988. In my uh, application viewer, I, I see either in the by sequence or document store that I already have SUP1 1988. So the issue there is that I've got uh, the same ID that I'm trying to use twice. Okay, well, that's an error, but uh, we can fix it, of course. So I'm going to go back to the code. It has to do with this that we've set up. Put. We're trying to put a comic into the database. There's either a failure or there's a success. Then we've got an if else block to deal with failures and successes. So let's uh, work a little bit more with this failure. Uh, next line uh, note depending on failure code, do something. Depending on which, which failure code. Um, we saw that um, at the moment uh, the I already closed it, but we saw that uh, that that uh, feedback there was a there was an error code of four zero nine. So there's different error codes; they're all in the documentation. So what we can do is we can have a way to, depending on the failure code, do a different result. Uh, this is going to be a case for a switch. So remember our syntax. We have switch and switch dealing with error code. So our syntax is we've got the switch. We have cases. We have a case of 409. We have a case. Here's some common ones 412. Uh, we'll do a default. There's other ones. We can add them in pretty easily. In the case of a 409 error, do the following. In the case of a 412, do the following. If we didn't, if there's any other numbers, maybe there's a 411, it defaults to default and do something else there. Do something in a particular block, break, stop, don't do anything else. So we've looked at breaks before, or we've looked at switches before. Uh, this works well here. So this switch is completely inside of the if block. If we did find an error, let's check which error. What we are then trying to check here in this switch is failure.status. The status property of this object is what stores the number. So now we're saying, OK, switch between these possible cases. Which of these possible cases is it? We know we've got a failure. Which number is it? 409, 412, one, or one we didn't take into account? So what a 409 is about is um, that ID already exists. What 412 is about ID is empty. Our default, uh, I don't know what it is just yet. I need more information. Let's say on 
you know, an error, and then actually write what that error number is so that I can further read documentation and figure out an answer. So then in the console, of course, this is for us to um, do our testing. Um, we already, with our current testing, know about this one, 409. It already exists. SUP1-1988, is it Superman or Superboy? That's 409. That's the one triggering. Technically, we, we cannot, we should not be able to trigger this error, 412. Um, Every, again, everything in pouch needs an ID. But we should not be able to trigger this one ever because we already have a little safety inside of uh, our index file where we have required, exactly. So we've added required uh, to several of these fields. So that's already protecting us there. If you want to fully test it, you can remove required to make sure you trigger that message inside of index but not necessary. Uh, it's right over here. Um, just FYI, back on the index HTML, we have required um, all of these fields. So I'm going to leave them there. But if you remove the required attribute, a person could not, a person could fill none, none of those fields in and try to submit. And that should trigger the 412 error, ID is empty. ID is made out of those different fields. If I don't fill in those fields, ID is going to be empty, most likely. So then the ID is empty. And if there's a, a, another kind of error, like maybe I'm updating the data wrong or something, it'll give me unknown error, and it will give me the code so I can go look it up in the documentation and then write an answer to the problem. Well, I'm, I've said the possibility that one reason that we trigger 409 is we're saving SUP1-1988 and it's Superboy and Superman. Two different comics, same ID. There's also the possibility that I am accidentally trying to save Superman number one two times. The exact same comic, I'm trying to save it two times. So we have those two possibilities. It is two different comics or it is the same comic. So we can say here, seems the data is the same. So we retrieve, so we first, first retrieve the data that exists to compare if it's the same. What's uh, keeping track of if it's the same or not is just the ID. Remember, we have also that extra field, unique ID. Unique ID is the one that is completely the full name of the comic. If the unique ID of two comics is exactly the same, it's the exact same comic. If the unique IDs are slightly different, it's a different comic. So that's how we can keep track of which is exactly the same. So what we need to do is db.get. We need to first check what is the thing already in the database that seems to be conflicting with what we're trying to save into the database. I'm going to say a comic under, uh, dot underscore ID. Remember, we saw in the documentation db.get allows us to get anything from the database. For example, SUP1, 1988. So that will try to get literally that one thing from the database. But because we've got a lot of stuff in the database, um, it doesn't make sense to try to guess what it is. We will use the current ID of the comic we're trying to put into the database. 
that is equivalent to SUP1 1988, the ID field of the comic I'm currently trying to save. Get that from the database. We saw with, we saw with pouch there is open there is always an a a callback function in trying to get in, in either a success or failure in anything db get db put uh, db delete there's always success or failure so that's what we're trying to do here let's first so first we retrieve the data that exists to compare if it's the same as the data we're trying to save First, let's get from the database to compare. We're going to see this several times as we do this. We're going to get used to typing this in our sleep. There's a failure and a success. There's a function where there will be a failure or a success. I'm going to break those curly braces apart. Note and of dot get to compare the existent data versus the new data. So I, I moved that to the next line. Okay, so this is the this is the part that uh, I'm saying we're gonna see several times this sort of idiom, this sort of syntax. We've already done it one time here, where put failure or success. If there's a failure, or else there isn't. Now we're doing db get. There's a failure. There's a success. If there's a failure, or else there isn't. So this sort of this sort of chunk we're gonna we're gonna do over and over. It might be dot put dot get dot, dot delete, but we're gonna have over and over function failure success if failure else. We're gonna do that over and over several times. This failure relates to trying to get the data. I know it looks exactly the same as this one named up here. This <coughs> failure relates to trying to put the data to the database. Trying to put, there may be a failure. Trying to get, there may be a failure. Here, what's happening? The reason why we may get a failure trying to get from the database, ID doesn't exist. And also output the, the message, which might help us to further debug. Technically, this one shouldn't ever happen. If this, if we're this deep, <coughs> if we're this deep into this if, this should never happen because that already was checked up there. The whole point we're here is because there was a failure up at the top in putting. There must be something unique. There must be something the same. Those IDs must be the same. So there, there shouldn't be that this ever happens. That ID that we're trying to put should be conflicting, so this should never happen. But we'll just put it there for completeness. The important part's going to happen here. We successfully tried to get 
the ID in question from the database. We'll say ID already in DB. Success dot unique ID. Actually, not the ID, uh, the unique unique ID ID already in database. So. This success is the is the data from the <coughs> database. This success is the data from the database that we're trying to get. We can access all of the properties of the data in the database. We have title, year, publisher, notes, unique ID. So the unique ID that's already in the database is this versus unique ID trying to save to DB is a comic dot unique ID oh, plus space a comic don't forget that plus If we're in this else block, we've hit success <coughs> in getting a particular comic from the database, its ID. We know this ID in the database conflicts with one we're trying to put. That all comes from put. OK, so we're going to start to compare. What is the unique ID in the database versus the unique ID of the one I'm trying to put into the database? Go ahead and save it and run it. Uh, and try to do what I'm doing here just to see this in an obvious way. I'm trying to save Superman number one, 1988. I'm trying to say Superboy number one, 1988. Uh, I'm trying to save the exact same comic um, two times. I, I mean, I'm trying to save a comic with the, exam the same ID two times. Just check your console to see how that looks. Just to show you what this should be doing. Okay, Superboy number one, 1988. That's the one I've been having trouble saving. Save. Okay, so I know I'm getting the error. I know that. We're in, we've triggered the point over here where we're inside of the if-else stuff going on. Unique ID already in database. Superman 1, 1988. ID trying to save Superboy 1, 1988. So that's hitting the if-else statement right there. We have, I have gotten a failure trying to save the same comic. I'm trying to also save the exact same again. Superman number one, 1988. I'm getting the error. And then the unique idea of what's already in the database is Superman 1988. The one I'm trying to save is Superman 1988. It's the exact same ID. So again, those are the two possibilities that we'll deal with right now. But those are the two things. Are you trying to save the same comic? twice or is it does it have different names
So there's a unique ID in the database already versus one I'm trying to save. Next line. The numbers? So <clears throat> the next line here, what I'm trying to do is, OK, um, to compare them, uh, and if they are exactly the same, tell the user, you're trying to save the same comic. You're trying to save a comic that already exists. Maybe they are trying to save a comic that they forgot that they already saved. Well, no, I'm trying to save Superboy versus Superman number one, 1988. So silently behind the scenes, it should do stuff to allow that, and the user never knows. So if the exact comic already exists, tell the user. Or if it's simply a conflict in IDs, um, generate a new unique ID. If it's one thing or if it's another. Well, that's another if else statement. So if else, this is end of another if else. Checking. Unique IDs. So up here in the console, I'm simply showing what is the unique uh, ID of the data already in the database? What is the unique ID of the comic I'm trying to save? Here's where we actually compare it. If the unique ID of the comic in the database is exactly the same as the unique ID of the comic I'm trying to save, tell the user uh, you already have that comic. Or else it's not exactly the same. One is Superboy, one is Superman. OK, then so here, just silently behind the scenes, generate that extra little bit of random number to create a brand new unique ID to save that. So here. In the if success dot unique ID equals 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 a comic unique ID dot unique ID. So here's where we're actually comparing triple equals. So strict comparison. We're comparing the left and the right. Uh, with the exact uh, type as well, the same type of data, uh, which should be string. So here, is the data already saved in the database exactly the same as the data we're trying to save? If yes, then we'll tell the user, alerts. We'll, we'll make a nicer um, uh, native pop-up later. We'll simply do a quick alert saying, you already saved this comic. We've been doing console outputs this whole time. Now we'll actually tell the user something. So we'll get a simple pop-up that will tell the user, you already saved this comic. Superman number one, 1988, you've already saved it. Because right here, we've compared it, and both have the exact same unique ID property. The exact same unique 
ID value in the unique ID property. Under else, we'll tell ourselves generating a new ID. So we're going to take the existing ID, SUP1-1988, and we're going to add to it uh, a little bit of random numbers at the end. Um, that should then uh, make it completely unique. So creating a variable here, um, ID TMP. comic dot underscore ID comma next line ID temp random okay so I'm temporarily storing the ID of the comic I'm currently trying to save. This a uh, comic all along is representing <clears throat> the comic I'm trying to save right now. It has an ID property. So store the ID of the comic I'm trying to save, store it in this variable. Uh, we're going to generate a random number, and we're going to combine the two. So remember we have math. We already know we're going to need to round this. So dot round, round it up, round it down. We can do ceiling, we can do floor, whatever. I, I don't think it matters. I'll just do round. Let it round up or down. Don't care. Uh, doesn't doesn't seem to be relevant at the moment. Inside of the parentheses, math dot random. All right, so it's going to create a random number, which is going to be a fraction, which we're going to round up or down. Well, we want it to be from 0 to some number, space times maybe 99. A random number between um, 0 and 100, just to be safe, <clears throat> just to be safe, 999. So some random number from 1 to 1,000 we're going to add in a moment to the end of this comic I'm trying to save. So who cares now if they're both SUP1-1988, because one of them is going to have SUP1-1988-2277, or whatever random number happens. And that happens right here a comic dot underscore ID equal to ID temp plus ID temp random. Okay, so we're checking what's the ID, store it, generate a random number from one to a thousand. 0 to 99, whatever. So one of a possible thousand random numbers. Replace the ID currently that we're trying to save. Replace it. So assign, replace what, what we <coughs> temporarily saved so we don't lose it, <coughs> plus this random number. So combine 
the ID plus a random number and replace the ID that uh, would have happened. And uh, put it into the database. We can do a shortcut here in that we don't need that function with error success. We're so deep in the if else checking that there shouldn't be any errors at this point. Uh, we've, um, we've got data to save. So 412 should never happen. Uh, we've gotten this deep in checking, OK, 409, there seems to be a conflict in IDs. Uh, we've been checking the data already in the database versus the data we're trying to put. So being this far into the else, db.put, I'm fine with not then doing the whole function, error, success, if, else, failure, all of that. It shouldn't cause a problem. It hasn't caused a problem in the past. All of this, all of this was inside of the of the first case of 409. The possibility of the ID conflict. So check that you've typed that right. Save it and run it try to save the exact same comic, you will either get the message of you've already saved that exact same comic, try to save a comic with a similar starting name, like me, I'm saving Superboy and Superman. No error should happen. And in the console, you should see that, OK, we generated a new ID. And if you look in the application viewer, you should see a brand new comic with the random number attached to the ID. Let me check mine. So first, I'll try to save exactly Superman number 1, 1988 again. Save. Pop up. You already saved this comic. And what's happening inside of the console? Well, confirming unique IDs are the same. So I get the pop up. You already have this comic. Superboy number one, 1988, with the same root letters. Save. No pop up. Um, console generating a new ID. I'm comparing Superman one, 1988, versus Superboy one, 1988. And to fully confirm, if I look in the application, sequence when I had Superman number one versus Superboy number one the unique ID for Superman number one was SUP 1 1988 and the brand new one is SUP 1988 492 <coughs> if I try to save Superboy number one 1988 again I should have the pop-up that says it's the same comic so here the um, you see the issue when dealing with data that could conflict if we're going to save so many different comics with similar names this is something we have to deal with um, there's many solutions to this sort of issue we could from the beginning generate this random number without having to deal with it 
later into the saving of the data, right back when we're setting ourselves up over here to um, right here when we were setting up ourselves up in the prep comic, we could have been generating a random number here early on too under the ID. That's another possibility that's not wrong. I'm showing here the different possible solutions. Unique ID, required ID, random number, All of this was happening inside of the failure. We'll do one final thing, then we'll wrap up for the day. Uh, under su success else, line 350, uh, where we had this successful OK, uh, one problem with trying to save, uh, when we save a comic, it saves it to the database. The, um, uh, the input form uh, should empty itself, should clear itself. So we'll do that. Dollar L form save comic brackets zero dot reset. Clear the uh, save comic form after successful saving of comic. The uh, can you show me like where where in the code you mean that? Three twenty. of this is if it's the exact same ID it's the exact same comic mm -hmm. they've already they might have forgotten that they've saved Superman number one mm -hmm. so it's the exact same comic that's why we're getting that pop of that alert okay, where do we need that else the else is if if unique ID is not the same unique ID is we do because we saw in the console it did say generating new ID we do trigger that else when, does, when, does it when the unique IDs are not the same this first part happens here when unique IDs are exactly the same Mm 
when they're not the same, we will trigger else. Underscore ID. Yeah, underscore ID is the one that is ultimately determining which one is when it's being saved. So yeah, maybe we should think of a better name for that. But unique ID different than the underscore ID. Yes. Question. Um, yeah. Why would you use a random function rather than some kind of hash function? Um, I mean, aren't you going to run into that problem where every time you go into add Superboy one? You're going to run into Superman one because it steps through sequentially and says, oh, let's generate a random ID for this. And you're going to get a whole bunch of Superboy one random IDs if they continue to try and add that one. Well, if it's the same, again, it comes back here that this is our secondary check of the unique ID. Um, so Superboy number one, 1988, will have the same unique ID always. But if I try to add it five times, the first thing it's going to run into is the Superman ID and say, oh, we've got a, we've got a situation where we have uh, non-unique ID, so let's generate a new unique ID. Huh. So five different times, you're going to get five different entries for Superboy 1. That's what I was about to double check here, but uh, I thought it wouldn't. Have you, have you tested it just to check that? Um, yeah, I just since you're creating a random one, it's no longer going to ever match and come in again. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, generating new ID. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I might be missing something then. Yeah, I need to look into that. I thought I had covered that with this solution. Now, you're suggesting a different way? You've got to generate some unique ID that you're checking against. Mm -hmm. Because if you're just putting in, if you're just checking against the underscore ID, that's going to match with the first one because it's stepping down through the database sequentially. Uh -huh. OK, that'll be something that I need to look into a little bit more. I don't have. Good thing we're we're testing it in different ways to figure out those issues. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay, I need to look into that. Yes. Well, the one number back here at under the ID, you're saying. What are we basing this ID on? You're saying just like Everyone, uh, can we uh, quiet down just a little bit here? Just one moment. Uh, go ahead. Why do we need to use the temp ID or whatever it is? Mm -hmm. And we cannot just use one number that we start from zero so just for, as, the, for the user, and we just use it as, as a counter. And it's going to be unique. And we don't need all of these um, pieces of the data. Yeah. That, the 
that that could be a way too if we're just going sequentially from zero to infinity. That that could be a way. Um, the the other fields that we are using, uh, you know, to generate the unique ID. Uh, I think it could work that way too. I just have to kind of see what best way to make a new sequential number. So that could be a possibility to solve both of the issues we're talking about here. So, so I have to look at it again, and then maybe we can find a more efficient way. So we're seeing here as we as we test this, we could have better solutions. That's good. You know, we're collaborating to figure out what could be better. So um, for the moment, if it if your code kind of works up to this point and you have no errors, that's good. If you're having errors, we'll have a little bit of lab time to figure that out. We're going to get a more efficient way to do this a little bit later, unless we want to stay until 10. Let's, let's vote. Who wants to stay until 10? No? OK. We'll continue that next time. Uh, but let me say what I've got so far, and uh, we'll do a little lab time.